season 51, war number 3, and we are up against Tizian once again. And this time my team will be Vox, Shocker and Silk. I will be taking path 5 in section 1, the first fight on path 9 in section 2, an Onslaught, an Iron Man Infinite War, a Destroyer, as well as a Prowler miniboss, and that will be it for this war. So yes, in section 2 I will be sharing a path, which is something I don't usually like doing, but that is just how the plan worked out this time around, unfortunately. Now starting off, the first fight here is an America Chavez on the Ebenflow Flow Knockdown and right back added nodes, and I am taking the fight with Silk. Now at this point we have seen this matchup quite a few times, and this one's gonna be no different. I'm just baiting special ones, then just, well, hitting her until she drops and that's about it. There's nothing special about this one. If she throws heavies, it's unfortunate, but that's not really gonna matter all too much. Just means I gotta bait a few more special attacks and that's about it. My damage does hurt quite a bit from the uh, right back added node as well as the Evenflow knockdown protection, but overall, Silk's damage output is high enough that it doesn't really matter all too much. Now, generally I just go for the special 2s here, but you can really just avoid using specials in general. Go for a special 3, special 1, it doesn't make a difference. Just hit Chavez until she drops, and you are good to go. Special 2, once again, it's fine if you push her there, you have the auto evade to save you. Just don't do it too many times back to back, because the, uh, the evade does have a cooldown. Uh, then we have a Red Skull on the event flow, and Knockdown and Heavy Hitter nodes, and I'm taking the fight with the Vox. There I was just checking the ability page, just to make sure that the special one is the one with the Undermine buff. So I can shut down Auto Block right from the start, without needing to worry about RNG getting my first Clarity passive. Even though I used the Advanced Power Boost, so that I could fire off the special one immediately, I still didn't do it for some reason, and I ended up just landing magic attacks, and managed to get the clarity up before Red Skull landed a single auto block. Gotta say that was a dumb play by me, since I didn't go for the special one, but I did get also very lucky that he didn't auto block. While Vox is immune to the power drain, Red Skull's uh, hitting or hitting the Red Skull's block does still deal damage even if you're immune. So, at the very least, due to being lucky, I don't have to use a potion after that. Now the fight itself is quite simple, as soon as you get the clarity up, it completely shuts down Red Skull's most, most annoying ability, being the order block on the special one, as well as the defense tactic. And then next up we have a Penny Parker here on the Hazashi's Shock and Bleed node, along with Power Focus 2, and I will be taking the fight with Vox. I had a teammate place all three of Odin's pre-fights here to give me a bit of a boost with the aptitude buff as well as the shock resistance to deal with the shock debuffs on this node. The Vox is only immune to poisons, so otherwise, without the pre-fight, I wouldn't really be allowed to hit her here on basically any point in the fight. I would only be able to hit the block if I didn't want to worry about any debuffs. Now with the shock resistance I'm basically just healing from the shock debuffs and while that's nice, it is also cutting down my damage output due to the opponent likely having the inequity mastery. Usually that's not really a problem though and Vox's damage output is high enough that a slight decrease on your damage is not gonna hurt you too much. I am fully boosted after all, I have the class advantage, I have the aptitude increasing my buff potency and overall it's just a penny, her health pool isn't too massive, and as long as you completely shut down the auto block, either with the attack tactic or the undermine buff from the special one, there's absolutely nothing she can do to you. You're also immune to power burn, so if she were to auto block you, you won't take any damage since, well, she can't power burn you. And then we have an onslaught on the event flow knockdown and right back edit miniboss node as usual, and I will be taking the fight with Shocker. Now, those with sharp eyes and, well, very deep shocker knowledge would notice that I am running in the silk synergy here. And I kinda forgot that it goes both ways for both silk and shocker. 
So the synergy gives Siglek Rupture debuffs on her medium attacks, but then it also gives Shocker Shock debuffs on his mediums. And Shock debuffs against Onslaught, that's not a great idea. So as soon as I noticed that, that was happening, I kind of froze for a moment and I wasn't exactly as focused in the fight itself as I should have been, and I failed to dex that special one. So now I'm melting from the Neuroshocks, I have those organic magnetisms on me lowering my ability accuracy, and overall, every single medium I throw will shock Onslaught, and that also means I will be gaining more Neuroshocks on myself. So, due to accidentally having the synergy here, and the fight became a race against the clock, However, against aggression prowess, Shocker will win the race any day of the week, so long as you don't eat too many specials from the opponent. Now, I did take a ton of damage, but that was the only fight I brought Shocker in for, so it's alright, I don't have to heal him up. And that was a nice reminder to double check everything before you go in and proceed with your war plans. It might cost you otherwise. Then we have an Iron Man Infinity War on the high energy diet and Burden of Might miniboss node, and I'm taking the fight with Vox. Now the Burden of Might, uh, Burden of Might node lowers your attackers' combat power rate for every buff they have. I can't remember if it looks for unique buffs or buffs in general, but. It doesn't matter, Vox has too many of both of them, so that means that his combat power rate will be zero through the whole fight. So no specials for me, I can only hit Iron Man here with basic attacks, but that's fine. Vox's basic attacks do hit pretty hard, especially once he has stacked up those Furies. And since the clarity charge allows you to completely shut down auto block. Iron Man here does absolutely nothing but waste my time a little bit. Now one thing I do need to keep an eye on is the power gain when he is below 15% and has passive armor ups or armor up buffs I guess. But as long as I can uh, bait specials well enough from this guy, it's not an issue. I did almost get caught by that special too there because he was being annoying. But luckily, the dex window was still open a little bit longer than I maybe thought it would be, and I did manage to avoid it. Otherwise, that special T might have been the end of me. Well, Iron Man doesn't hit all too hard himself. The special T can stun you, and it does inflict a pretty potent incinerate as well, so that could have been bad. Regardless, the fight went down, no issues whatsoever. Bit of a longer Vox fight than usual, but that's just due to the fact that I can't use the degens in that one. Then we have a destroyer here, a rank 3 one, on the Aspect of Evolution miniboss node, along with uh, unblockable special to. I for, I'm forgetting nodes today for some reason. Enhanced special to, that's the one. And I'm taking the fight with Silk. And if you've seen this, or me using Silk against anyone on this node before, you probably know by now what I'm about to do. It is the good old special 3 rotation, which will kill anything on Silk's path. Now, I went ahead and baited this special 2 here on purpose, just to make sure I don't accidentally push the guy to a special 3. I don't want that teaching on me, so I just went for it, got the full dex. If I didn't, the auto evade would have saved me anyways, so it is safe to do that here, and at this point, the fight is done. The special 3 rotation is plenty of overkill here at this point. I only need to hit him a few more times after it, and he will drop before I even get close to my specials. Or, I guess, my special too. Now, the destroyer is a bit of an annoying defender usually, but... Well, as long as you can full dex the special too comfortably, you should be able to take him on most nodes just fine. Now, then we have a prowler on the combat deja vu prowess and conflictor miniboss node, and I'm taking the fight with Vox. Now, 
Now I opted to not use the white magneto pre-fight here, or have my teammate place one, because I wanted to utilize my degenerations here. And if I have passive parry stuns, I have no way to burn the conflictor node before triggering my degens, so they all just get eaten by prowlers uh, nodes here. So the game plan is to push myself close to a special 2, and then land a re-parry to burn the conflictor node, and then throw a special to inflict degens, and then just watch the defender melt. Now that is the plan anyways, but not all plans always go to plan, and yeah, I'm struggling a bit trying to land that re-parry here. What that means is I'm gonna be pushed to my special 2, which is unfortunate, but at the end of the day that's not really a big issue. I do have the cosmic power back boost on, which allows me to gain a ton of power back from the special, and at this point, the degens are ticking, and it's only a matter of time until the guy is dead. I didn't get as many degens on him as I wanted to, but that's still plenty. Landing the special one here to pause the degen just for a moment to increase their damage further, I managed to close the fight out with just that single degen rotation. And I gotta say, while it wasn't the most ideal way to play the fight, it was very satisfying. Vox really does have some of the best looking animations in the whole game, and playing him, I don't know, I just love it. As for the results, we did end up losing the war 5 to 6. So this time around it was a lot closer, but we still ended up losing by a single death, which was very unfortunate once again.